Hey guys, um, I want to share with you briefly a brief teaching on the multifaceted uh, voice of God and how imperative it is, I feel, that we as the body of Christ uh, understand this and have a grasp on this. Uh, first off, you might hear the rain. It's a deluge outside of our studio right now, which I think is appropriate for what I'm going to be sharing about the uh, many waters of the voice of Jesus and using it as an analogy out of Revelation 1 on the multifaceted voice of God. And uh, we, we really need to understand this. His nature, his end result goal is always the same. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But his voice and the means by which he gets it to and through the body of Christ changes quite often, even his frequency for what purpose and what season and the means by which he communicates. So uh, I, I feel Revelation 1, this encounter John got caught into on the uh, Isle of Patmos, paints a good picture of that. It really displays it well, what I'm trying to get across. And I've just noticed, I'm sure many of you guys have as well, and I've even been guilty of it, as, as many of us have, where we are familiar with a frequency, if you will, or a you know, uh, a strong tone of God's voice that we're used to that impacted our lives somewhere along the way. And if we're not careful, we end, to, we end up then camping, camping around that, sorry, uh, and making it, it, you know, the tone, the, the standard or the, the gauge by which we, we hear God's voice. And if it doesn't sound like that, then it's, it's it, you know, it must not be the, the true voice of God. And, and that's how the body of Christ gets less full, number one, but also so divided. And you see other camps pointing at others and no, they're off, it's about this. Or, you know, God speaks this way and that way and God's emphasis is on this in this hour. When really God's so vast and multifaceted and his purposes are so many for one, one goal, one end purpose and goal, but the means by which he gets there through different peoples, kings, tribe, languages, uh, you know, offshoots of the body is the hand, the feet. I mean, uh, you know, the legs to getting it mobilized. And there's so many means by which he gets his will and purposes done. You know, so it is his voice communicating to those different different uh, body parts and functions of, of the body of Christ. And we need to know that. So uh, here we have Revelation 1. I skip down to verse 9. I, John, your brother and partner in the tribulation and the kingdom and the patient endurance that are in Jesus, was on the island of, uh, called Patmos on account of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. Watch this now. This is huge. I, John, was in the spirit on the Lord's day, comma, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet okay so he didn't hear a trumpet he heard a loud voice the best way he could describe its frequency was like a loud trumpet but it was a voice in other words it was communication he was hearing it first let me backtrack he was in the spirit then he heard a voice many of us or you know we feel like we're lacking in hearing the voice of god will get in the spirit into his presence lean into him out of your soulish mind and in, in the to-do to -do list of the day. Although I feel he was in a deep realm of the spirit here by encounter, but still it applies. The analogy through prayer applies. Uh, if you get in the spirit, you're much more apt to hear his voice, obviously. But I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and I heard behind me a loud voice that sounded like a trumpet. So a booming, alarming, attention-gathering voice, like a trumpet, saying, red letters now, this is Jesus. And this is what we're going to stay within. Just John, the beloved now known as the Revelator in the book of Revelation, and Jesus. This is the only two, it's only two way of communication, John and Jesus to John. That's it. And I'm going to show you how quickly the voice of God can change and sound so different for so many different purposes. When God speaks again, 
who he is doesn't change. His multiple faceted voice will never contradict each other either. We need to know that. His uh, multiple tones and ways of communication to his people will never contradict themselves. You'll always be able to paint them on the backdrop of scripture and find them to be true. But they will sound very different at times for different means and purposes through different people and times and seasons. And that's what we need to know. And, and I think far too often by good intentions, we truly hear a frequency of God's voice and then we camp around that. And then anything else that doesn't sound like that, we, we don't welcome it in, you know. Uh, furthermore, we think everybody else is off that's hearing in these different frequencies or manners, but it very well can be the voice of God. I often liken him to a diamond that you shine a light through. It's one light and one diamond, but you begin to hit it with different angles and you, it's offshoot of pink and a bit of green and blue and white and, and such brilliance of, of uh, color and beauty through one diamond from one light. Well, God's voice is this way. So I heard behind me a voice sounded like a trumpet. Write what you see in a book, John. It's Jesus now, red letters, telling John. So the booming, this is what we want to pay attention to. You notice he, he described it as sounding like a trumpet. And this is the reason because it was, it was alarming to catch his attention. Write down what you see in a book. It was a command, you know, uh, to call to attention and get his, you know, get his attention to then write what you're about to see in a book. So it was a command, a trumpet, that which is alarming and, and, uh, and, and gets your attention. Write what you see in a book and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamon, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, the seven churches, um, and so forth. Watch this. Then I turned, okay? I was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day, and then I heard a voice. If you want to hear His voice, I feel His presence now, even, even beginning to lean in. But if you want to hear His voice, you lean into the Spirit, and, and that triggers communication like you wouldn't believe. But behind him, he hears a booming trumpet-like voice, though. It was not just the sound of a trumpet. It was a loud voice. It sounded like a trumpet. Got his attention right down in the book to the seven churches. So he gets that, gets the book ready to write in this revelatory experience, but turns now to the one whom the red letters flow from his mouth. It's Jesus Christ. I turn to see the voice that was speaking to me. And on turning... I saw seven golden lampstands in the midst of the lampstands, uh, one like a son of man, clothed with a long robe and with a golden sash around his chest. The hairs of his head were white, white like wool, like snow. His eyes, I'm in the ESV, it may read a little different uh, for you guys, but uh, the point will be the same. His eyes were like a flame of fire. Man, uh, his feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace. And watch this now same chapter for crying out loud we're only four or five verses over same experience he just heard a voice from the same person behind him triggered it by being in the spirit sounded like a trumpet now he turns to he who's holding golden lampstands the seven stars for the you know the angels of the churches describes his looks his eyes of fire hair white as wool now watch this his, you know, uh, his feet were like burnished bronze refined in a furnace and his voice was like the roar of many waters. Now, that instant, that quick, his voice, same person, same being, same encounter, same John with the same ears in Revelation to, to see and hear this experience. And, um, and, and we're going to go into the breakdown of that, and we'll even see back and forth how his voice changes again, uh, which there's so much depth here, of course, the meanings, uh, the revelations to the churches and all. But where I'm really getting at is God, you know, in, in the elementary form of just knowing that his voice can be so multifaceted, so quick for different means and purposes, same end result and goal. Uh, I was explaining this to somebody the other day that I knew was very familiar with basketball, like NBA sports, right? And, and a good way to look at this is if you are an NBA coach, 
trying to take a team. I'll try and make a female analogy, maybe with cooking or something, but men would understand this. I'm sure women as well. And you go to the Los Angeles Clippers and begin to address them in correction of certain you know, facets of their team and what to rebuke and correct and affirm and, and validate and shift and move around for what purpose? The NBA Finals, the championship, same goal. But you're gonna speak to the Clippers differently by what means they carry walk in and walk through. Then that same instance, same person, same end result goal, same desire and passions, the same, you know, same uh, direction we're all going in. You then shift to the Cleveland Cavaliers uh, with LeBron James, of course, and, and you know these stars, you're not going to address them the same way you are the Clippers. They may, you know, not be as strong down low, in, you know, around the rim as the Clippers, and so you're going to address them differently. Then you shift to, let's say, the Lakers. Every team, the way you speak to them, really, where I'm getting at, the means by which you're trying to communicate the corrections, even, and that's what you then see Jesus begin to do the, to the seven different churches. None of them were the same. That's why it was the roar of many waters. And I'm going to explain that. And this is what we just got to know about Jesus, the Father, the Holy Spirit. Because the religious spirit doesn't like the teaching I'm, I'm bringing across, across right now because they get nervous of deception. And watch out. Uh, you know, don't, he's the same yesterday and t today and forever. You know, uh, stick to the Word of God. He's just one God, one voice, you know, and all this. But in the very Word is the crystal clear uh, description of God's voice being so multifaceted. He, as a being, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. End result, goal, same. Purpose, uh, destinies. But how to get there through different people in the body of Christ and the means changes vastly, drastically, from person to person, camp to camp, ministry to ministry. And it's, it's seen so clear through these seven churches in Jesus. Uh, the, the culmination of all things, God in man, right here we see it. And um, so uh, he turns, voice like a trumpet, triggered by being in the spirit. He turns that same person that the voice came out of that sounded like a trumpet, just several verses later, now he turns, gives his physical description. It says his voice was now like the roar of many waters, multiple waters. So probably like the sound of a rushing uh, white capped river and then also a, a rapid stream. It's a little bit more peaceful, but still many waters, different sounds and um, not the roar of waters, but many waters, multiple waters. And the reason, you know, for this is because, again, the trumpet of Jesus's voice was to trigger his attention to write down what you see to get his attention. Once he turns now and sees he who is about to describe to him what he sees and is to write down, that's when his voice changes. Jesus's voice changes to many waters. And the reason for that is because now from here on out, you see Jesus begin to describe the different revelations, corrections, rebukes, affirmations to seven different churches. And they're all different. There are many waters, there are multiple waters, different loves, you know, affirmation, love here, rebuke there, correction here, tighten this up. And it, it sounds so different through so many different people, different rewards even for conquering and overcoming through the different seven churches, which we know is the seventh, uh, seven church ages. But um, again, what's paramount here to know is that God in his vast nature of communicating it can sound so different to many different camps. And, uh, and that was why once he turned, a lot of people read through this quickly and don't realize, uh, you know, these details. I'm very intrigued by the voice of God. And when I see him speaking, it's like I really camp out there and I wanna know every detail about it. And so why it sounded like a trumpet, like even the nature of his voice, it's, there's, it's speaking within it, if you will. There's, there's hidden mystery within even the frequency of his voice of the trumpet. That was why, because it was too alarming to get his attention. Now it's multiple waters, the roar of many waters, because he's got multiple, many revelations to now dish out that John must write down that goes out to the angels of these churches, all seven. And um, 
how that you say, well, how does it practically play out nowadays in the body? I would say, um, you know, you, you see, I'm trying to think how to put this tactfully, but how how we would see it is, to, you know, just pick certain camps and ministries, and you see, you often see strong slants of God's nature and voice through them, that will weave through them, and it's the voice of God. It's who he is. If it doesn't contradict scripture, typically they heard God encountered him in a certain way in one of the waters. Let's just, uh, you know, use that analogy. And so it impacted them. Or they, let's say they heard the trumpet and, and it was so real to them. And it really was the voice of Jesus. And it should be. And it should have impacted them. But what we must be careful about doing is, you know, let's say you heard the trumpet sound of his voice and so now you think that's the only way he can speak and anything outside of that if it doesn't line up with the frequency you're used to you don't welcome it in you kind of throw up your walls subliminally you, you mean not to but that's what we that's what happens or let's say you were the one that the rough the, the roaring sorry uh river came to of his voice that's what you're familiar with that's what impacted you the most so your filter even on the, the christian walk is all through that roaring roaring water that, that hits you from his voice. You may have the peaceful stream of his voice. It's another water that came to you in a loving rebuke, kindness with more tact. And that's, that's the angle you come from. And how that looks today is uh, often you'll see certain camps that really camp around the grace of God. And everything's grace, 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 the grace of God. And, and we know how true that is. Thank God for his grace. What would we do without it? That's truly his voice. Um, some people camp out on the judgment of God, judgment, judgment, judgment. And, um, you know, and we know there's aspects of God as well. The Bible says clearly, behold the kindness and severity of God. And you can't even get through, you start skipping through further into the book of Revelation, there's judgment crystal clear in there from Jesus himself, red letters. So you can't really get around that. Again, sorry from stepping on any theological toes, but the point of where I'm getting at is it's also a casualty if you camp around just judgment, 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 and don't realize God also speaks in grace, and also the love of God, His mercy, the power of God, miracles, the Holy Spirit, uh, the, revela the revelatory realm of dreams and visions, uh, signs and wonders. Um, you know, so it just goes on and on, the, the multi-faceted voice of God. And um, I really feel in this hour, God, not only with the fivefold offices is really letting the dividing walls fall down and watching the fullness of the fivefold come together and merge, but God's voice is being appreciated uh, more and more for the fullness of God to then be welcomed through the body of Christ and capitalize upon the kingdom in the earth through the fullness of the body. You know, it's, it's, we really hurt ourselves when we say, oh, I'm the hand, this is my function, I don't get the foot. So I don't relate to you and I don't coordinate with you and cooperate. Uh, just like the aspects of God's voice, he's not going to speak to the hand the same way he is the foot. There's different commissions, uh, you know, directions, instructions. And so it's good that we know his voice. Again, where we're going with this thing is the body of Christ, the hands, the feet, the legs, the, you know, the mind. All We're going the same direction for the end result goal. But our function and how we get there and how God speaks can look drastically very quick. And you see that, I believe, uh, beautifully in Revelation 1, where John's merely given a revelation of things, I believe, that have passed and are to come. But in the book of Revelation, it sounds like a trumpet. Jesus, same voice. He turns. Now his voice sounds like many waters. You skip through once these waters have gone out to the seven churches. That's why there's many waters. To the, there's probably was seven of them to the different uh, revelations going to the seven different churches. You get over to Re Revelation 4, and John says, Then I heard the first voice, again like a trumpet. We all know this verse. that said, Come up here. I'll show you what, what must come after this, what must take place. But there was a trumpet again to get his attention. Come up here. So Jesus, in the matter of four chapters, goes, he speaks same uh, person, the, the Son of God, the resurrected Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ glorified, eyes of fire, hair white like snow, speaks the frequency or tone, if you will, of communication sounded like a trumpet. 
verses later, John turns to see him. Now his voice, same voice, same encounter, same person hearing it. It'd be one thing if it was a different person and they just, their hearing filter was different, same person. Uh, now it sounds like many waters because it's many revelations that have to go forth to the seven different churches and they all sounded different. Uh, the rewards, like I said, were different. The rebukes, the admonitions, everything. You get to chapter four and then John says, ah, I've heard that before. It was the first voice came again that sounded like a trumpet, said, come up here. I will show you what must take place after this. So um, I just wanted to really uh, do a quick teaching on that and, and let us be more aware, so to speak, that God is obviously so capable of this, number one, but it's how he operates and speaks and always has. And we are much more beneficial individually and corporately as the body of Christ when we grasp this and welcome it. Do I condone, you know, welcoming in just any, uh, you know, crazy revel? Not at all. Everything's got to be founded and rooted in Scripture. But like I said, it won't contradict Scripture. None of his channels or frequencies of his voice will ever contradict each other or scriptural, uh, scriptural basis. But they can sound very different very quickly to, to and through different people. And it's good that we know that and we appreciate that in others and welcome it because then it can complete us and we can complete them, which is really God in and through us. But just want to leave you guys with that. Bless you. And I'll pray even now that our, our ears will be open to hear the uh, multifaceted voice of God uh, like never before. Yeah, so just receive. God, I thank you for each and every one, the hunger. Uh, the awakening right now you're stirring in the body of Christ, the eyes to see and ears to hear like never before. God, I thank you even now for your multifaceted voice coming to us and through us for the fullness of your purposes, for the maturity of the bride of Christ, all that we may know you intimately and glorify you in these last days and, and uh, you know years to come. We love you. We bless you. In Jesus' name. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Hope that blessed you. We'll catch you next time.